Okay, so I finally arrived to Micro Center. There was a lot of uh, glare from the sun on the way here because I drove over here during sunset, but it looks like the sun has completely, well, close to completely set now. Yeah, as you can see in the distance, that's the Micro Center. So I decided to drive up a bit closer because I think it wouldn't be very uh, good for my equipment to have to wheel it all the way out across the parking lot. So I got back from Micro Center. I spent, I mean, hours there just checking out all the different hardware they have and trying to make sure I get the parts that are right for me and at the best price and everything. So um, I got everything I would need to build a computer except for the computer case and that is because they don't seem to sell any micro ATX cases that have a 5.25 inch expansion bay for the optical drive. So my experience in Micro Center was, was good. Um, it's like shopping anywhere except they sell pretty much all the hardware you would need to build from the most entry-level PC that isn't even gaming to the best gaming PC there is. I mean, it's like if Newegg was a retail store, that would be it. It's a bit smaller than Fry's, but the fact that it, it is small, it feels a bit more welcoming and less intimidating to look around. Okay, so my goal was to build a decent entry-level PC that has all the features that I would need, maybe not want, a PC that I can later upgrade to something more advanced, and then I can take the old parts, like the graphics card, maybe the CPU, and take it to my old 10-year-old gaming PC at in LA and make it more modern. So let's take a look at what we have. First we have the GeForce GTX 1650 Super. This is a, a very good entry-level graphics card and can, it can run any game assuming you turn down the settings and don't need uh, like 120 Hertz for many of the newer games. You know, it's not the latest graphics card, like the RTX cards, so it doesn't have RTX broadcast, or voice, DLSS, or ray tracing, but I don't really need all of that. So, next up we have a B550M chipset motherboard. So the difference between the B550 and the B450 is that the B550 has a... PCI Express 4.0 x16 lane, whereas the B450 only has a PCI Express 3.0. So I got this motherboard specifically because it also has a PCI Express x4 lane, which can be used to add in, let's say, a capture card that requires this type of lane. While I was in Micro Center, I was looking at motherboards that had Wi-Fi, but I was told that the Wi-Fi on the motherboards won't be as good as this specific PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter. And this one is a, uh, a Wi-Fi 5, so it's not the latest, which is Wi-Fi 6, but it's good enough. It's a dual Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and also supports Bluetooth. My CPU is a Ryzen 5 3600 and I've heard many good things about this CPU. It is 6 core 12 threads and its single core performance is pretty good. I would venture to guess that this is a solid CPU that I won't need to upgrade for a while even with the newer CPUs coming out, but we'll see. So here I have 
a mechanical hard drive that is two terabytes and I'll be using this to store video projects, games, and anything that takes up a lot of space. I bought a 650 watt 80 plus bronze PSU. It is semi-modular. So 80 plus bronze gives roughly an 85% efficiency at 50% load. So it's not as good as 80 plus gold, which is 90% efficiency, but it's certainly better than some of the non-certified PSUs out there, so I should expect to, I guess, not cause any significant increases in the, I guess, power bills, or at least or very little of it would be wasted. So what I have here is just a DVD rewritable drive. The RAM that I got is a 32 gigabyte kit by Neo Forza. It's two sticks of 16 gigabytes. It is it has RGB, DDR4, and I've never actually heard of this company before. Apparently they had the least expensive of memory sticks that were available at the store at the time. Here I have an SSD drive that is 500 gigabytes. This is where I would be installing my operating system and any programs that I want to be able to load up very quickly. So my main programs. And last but not least is a 24 inch full HD gaming monitor. By gaming monitor, I mean it has at least 144 hertz of refresh rate. But as you can see here, it says 165 hertz overclocked. So I thought about um, getting a second monitor, but I'm not sure what that second monitor would be. I'm thinking maybe I can get a 27 inch 4K monitor to help with productivity. I heard that 4K monitors are good for that, if not good for gaming because my hardware is definitely not going to be enough to uh, game at 4K. Right, so how much did my components cost? My graphics card was $165. The motherboard was $75. My CPU was $180. The Wi Fi adapter is um, $41. The mechanical 2 terabyte hard drive was $55. So the uh, 650 watt A plus bronze PSU was $85. The DVD drive was $17. Memory sticks, $115, and the crucial 500 gigabyte SSD was $60, and my monitor was $180. So that comes at a total of $1,031, including tax. The PC case that I'm planning on getting is going to be this Micro ATX NR400 from Cooler Master. It has a tempered glass window and a CD drive. So everything will be waiting here until the case arrives. The reason why I went to a micro center to get all these things is one is because I guess the prices are a bit cheaper. Most people are ordering things online. And the other reason is that it rains here a lot and I don't want my delivered items to be waiting and getting wet from the rain as well as getting stolen possibly. Um, picking up these items by hand gives me physical control of my things. So one of the things that I want to modify on my desk is to cut a hole maybe two inches by two inches maybe a bit more to allow 
clearance for cables to go down under the table. And then I can push this table all the way to the wall and there shouldn't be any issues with vibrations anymore. So for that, I will need to get myself an end mill bit for cutting from the sides. Alright, so the case arrived in the mail, which means it's time to start building. The first thing to put on here would be the motherboard. correct procedure would have been to install the power supply first, that way I have a ground to actually attach my static strap. So let me just gently settle this motherboard in here and then I'll place the PSU. Uh, I think I need to access the other side of the case in order to get the PSU in. I can't seem to find the screws for the motherboard. Okay, so it turns out the screws are located in the opposite side of the case, in a bag like this. is going to have to go on the other side. Alright, so which screws do I use to secure the motherboard? Screw number A. motherboard's in. I guess I have to start attaching the power cables now. I've never seen this cable before. Yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna have to look up the yeah, the foot panel connections. Because it doesn't explain everything. Alright, so I downloaded the manual and it tells you exactly where all the front panel pins are. I don't know why it's not included in the manual that came with the motherboard, but oh well. Now the pins are all in. I could probably move these cables around and pick the right grommet to uh, go through. So I guess I'll do that. Alright, now for the components. I'm gonna start off easy and install the RAM. I guess I should install the PCI Express cards, starting with the graphics card. Now I'm worried that if I install this graphics card, there's not going to be any room for the PCI card below it for the network adapter. And it appears I was right, there's no room for the uh, PCI. E Express card anymore, so I guess I'm gonna have to get a new motherboard, unfortunately. 
Well, I guess I'll have to get back to this uh, once I have this sorted out. Well, I figure that while I'm here, I could probably install the hard drives and the CD drive. So there's a different way that you can mount the hard drives, but right now I'm just going to mount the SSDs. And these are going to attach to these uh, rubber, I guess, friction, friction attachments. <laughs> gets a new motherboard and actually gives you room to install a two-slot graphics card and a PCI Express X1 component. I don't think I can do anything else more from here. Alright, welcome back everyone. Um, oh, these my guys. I got myself a replacement motherboard. I'm using ASRock rather than Gigabyte, and this one apparently should have enough room for a dual slot graphics card because right below it appears to be M.2 slots with armor protecting it. And um, if that armor plate happens to be in the way, I guess I could remove that to make some room. But okay, let's see if um, this will actually work. This thing looks pretty beefy, especially the back. I hope there's enough room. I need to get these cables out of the way. So yeah, off camera I've added the necessarily the necessary cables for the semi-modular power supply so that I don't have to do it while I'm recording being blocked by the mechanical hard drive. So let me see if I can remove this. Okay, so now I need to grab the screws for the motherboard. So a neat way to organize your screws while you're working on a computer, I found, was using coffee filters. They're like 25 cents for a pack of a hundred. They're really cheap. Well, it looks like it's a good fit. I don't know if uh, if there's enough room quite yet. I'll actually have to take out the network card and actually install it to see. So let's attach the network adapter. It's fairly small, so I don't think it would be a problem. Hmm. This looks almost like an M.2 adapter on the PCI Express. It looks like the cables going to it are rather short, so I won't be able to run them all the way to the, um, the antenna mount on the motherboard, which this motherboard actually has. So for now, I guess I can just install it as a PCI Express card and it fits alright now for the CPU so I think this gold uh, corner here with an arrow that's marked it goes on the upper left when viewed from well, my perspective, not the camera's perspective, and it fits. 
so for now I'm just going to use the stock heatsink and fan. I don't plan on overclocking it because that will void the warranty. I may need to remove these screws in order to get this in. I don't know if I should have installed this on the motherboard before before putting in, it in the case. Okay, so uh, I guess I do have to take out the motherboard and install the CPU before putting the motherboard in the case. Alright, so I had to unscrew everything that I screwed in for the motherboard to take it out, which is annoying. But anyway, there is a plate that comes with the motherboard that goes behind the CPU and it has this uh, insulated layer, I guess to protect the board itself, while these four metal tubes that come out, they're attached to the heat sink in order to help dissipate the heat to the back, to uh, behind the motherboard here. And there's already thermal paste applied, there's like a whole square of it, maybe not the best pattern might be a bit ex excessive, but it means I don't have to apply my own. So there's a spring action on the screws. I'm gonna have to push down on it in order to get the threading going. And the plastic of the fan housing is sort of in the way, but they bend. That looks like... I think this should be fine, hopefully. I'll definitely uh, test the temperature once I get this started, but for now I think we're good. Time to put it back in. Okay, so according to the manual, I should install them first in channels or in slots A2 and B2. Those are the ones that are compatible with 3200 MHz. The other two, A1 and B1, go, only go up to 2933 or something like that. I don't know why it's designed like that, but, but I only have two memory sticks anyway. And so I probably won't have to worry about the other two slots unless I decide to upgrade to more than 32 gigs, which I don't see the need for anytime soon. Now we should put back the hard drives. This one couldn't fit here at all. Fortunately, it doesn't look like it. The motherboard is in the way, so I'll have to actually put this mother uh, this hard drive in the back. All right, so I turned the case over so you can see what's going on. This mechanical hard drive will go here. And this SSD drive will go here. snap something that doesn't sound good. I don't like how loose it feels here. Probably most definitely did break something. I haven't even started the computer yet and I've already broken something. Alright back to the front. Probably not gonna win any awards on cable management. I'm still missing a third SATA cable that goes from the CD drive to the motherboard, so I'll have to purchase that separately. But for now, it seems like I have everything I need to actually power this thing on and see the light show. Alright, so moment of truth. Actually, which is the power button again? Is it this one? This one. Oh wait, I still need to turn on the power supply. Like it's turning on, it's making noises. Hmm. 
looks pretty good. Uh, one of the memory sticks is not lighting up. Is it even seated? It looks like it's out a bit. The back fan isn't running. And neither is the front fan. But the CPU is definitely running. And the fan for the graphics card is running. So something might have gone wrong. I'll have to go back in and check. So the graphics, so the memory was indeed not fully seated. And now I feel like an idiot because I forgot to put this in, which means I'll have to take the motherboard out again so that I can put this in and complete the setup. So yeah, I don't know how I could have made that mistake, but somehow I did. I thought you can put this in at the end, but you have to go from the inside, so yeah, there's that. So I decided to reorganize the cables so that things are more organized in the front, but that comes at a cost of everything being um, disorganized and chaotic in the back. But we're going to cover that anyway, so you won't be able to see it. Alright, so now the inside looks a lot nicer. I can't seem to find the jumper pins for resetting the BIOS though. I don't know if there's like a reset button. But yeah, I'm not too worried about that right now. Alright, so let's try this again. up. I'm not sure what that LED means. Okay, it's steady on. Both the fans in the front and back are spinning. So I think we're good. Let me see if I can hook this up to my uh, monitor and see if anything shows up. So it looks like we have a winner. I just need to find a SATA cable to hook up to the CD drive and then I can install Windows. And the keyboard works apparently. So some preliminary st data. The CPU is running kind of high on idle. 56.5 degrees C. I could see if I could tighten the screws on the CPU heatsink to see if that improves things. If not, I may need to um, get an aftermarket heatsink. So here you can see that my computer is drawing roughly 93 watts, and this is in the BIOS. So I don't know how much um, power is being run to actually keep the BIOS open. But yeah, it's 93 watts. I mean, it shouldn't take a lot of CPU power to run the BIOS, right? So this seems to be roughly the idle power draw, which is a bit high, I think. So turning the monitor off actually lowers the power by about 10 or 9 watts. So it's actually drawing 86 watts. So found out that the screws on my CPU weren't screwed in all the way so I screwed it I screwed them in until you can't screw them in anymore yet still the CPU temperatures go up to 56.5 degrees Celsius so I will probably need to get an aftermarket cooler